Hey guys, I'm back with Renault Megana and this time I will hope I will be able to show you how to fix your clutch problem for the mine. As you can see it lost the pressure. You can push it in the floor and I cannot change the gear and what wells. I got some uh, oil under the car, probably the brake fluid. At least it seems like so. So my feeling is that the faulty is clutch uh, bearing or this uh, conic cylinder and then we'll see if it is or not I actually ordered the part already so hope I will be able to help you at least to give idea how to do it never done this before hope you unlocked your car so it's easy to get her in but if not you can see there is a little mark for the key and then we we'll hold there down <laughs> so first make sure that you have uh, secured your car nice and tight especially the back because you will not use this. I use a few bricks there, a few bricks here as well. Some here and some here. We'll see how it will work. See that it's a little bit going like that direction. The level is not totally leveled so I hope this will help some way. And of course I put some heavy wood down there. Some here so when I lift it up it will be Nice and tight will not uh, start sinking the ground because this is kind of soft ground. But it won't be possible during there. Plus, this will make some nice and stable surface. First, I will just open the tires as regularly. It's using this 13 mm socket to take away the cover, and of course, it's, I think it was 17 mm, something sort of like that. Take away the Bolts, but this is the set that comes with the car. Try to get it up where I shoot it, like the point. You can see this is a special point where you have to lift your car up I don't next to it, so I have space to put under there. I will try to make it a little bit more up so I can fit this wood piece there. And because I have uh, not leveled ground, I will try to lift up both sides simultaneously. See one jack stand there, one jack stand here, so lift up one side a little bit, one side other a little bit, and we'll hope this will make sure that the car will not sway in one side. So, no, I think the car looks pretty stable for the moment. But just for the safety purpose, you only, I will just put aside here some more bricks. So, you know, just in case, you know, some wood piece. So, the reason why you have to lift it up high, so you can get underneath it. So, if you can get underneath the car, well, let's lift it up. And then it's alright. I think I will be able to squeeze the ring, not too much space, but. I don't need too much space. Remember, just put all your parts somewhere. Just put all these clips together. So So 
So next I'll try to remove the battery. Well, you will need 10 millimeter socket or spinner. Next you can remove the battery. I think you have to remove this one. There is a small ball there. But yeah, you can see right now. It's holding this in place, the battery, so remove this one. Maybe 14. This little piece, about 40 millimeters. Hope not, maybe 30. Yeah, sorry guys, it was 13, but it was very tightly closed there. So, 13 millimeters for opening this battery. For you remove this piece, put it aside. So, this is how it looks with that battery. And here is actually where it's secured the battery on the setup. Well, next day uh, I'll try to remove this old piece. Remember, this was negative terminal, so when you put everything back together, don't forget this one. Disconnect this one. Have you seen it? Just put this one in and then push it upwards. So the orange goes here in, the black is top. And you see my color is down there. His button. And then all these are. Take this one away. So next, just use CRV Torque 40. This one's all about on board. This one we go 30 or 35. So this is cement, some sort of great block. Not probably very expensive, so don't uh, break this one. <laughs> Put some aside. Next, after that, I will just go. You can do different steps. You also can leave this one if you want here. I just removed it, so I'm not sure why I removed it. <laughs> Here is as well under there. Little piece you have to squeeze. 
I've got a feeling it will be easier done when this will be removed so I can rotate a little bit this one away and we'll just take away this air pipe right away this pops easy off just take some so this work actually gives you a chance to clean your car time time <laughs> So I remove these two bolts here and screw. This is fine freely, just take them a bit away. There is something more, I think everything is together. have trouble with these ones and just put it there and tape around again. Okay, just cut the tape around there, like this black tape around this black piece you see. Yeah. So I can remove this piece. And I can clean this one as well, that's good. <laughs> just for exercise here, I will just slide it a little bit further away. Not sure you can see, but anyway, I'll put it here. So yeah, go on top of me. Anyway, so I didn't lose any of these plastic uh, bolts or as well. These torque 30, no, why is torque 20 screws? I'll just put everything here so I don't lose anything. I'll start with hardest to sell it. Not clear that I actually got this off. Okay, now the easier part. It's moving. This molding plastic. Pull this up. Also good to clean your car, you will be able to clean everything under there, inspect everything. When else you taking away this car? When I took these out last time, then I actually broke two out of five, so this time none broke. And this side must be more healthy.
You can go more to the other side. Sounds not easy. So it's actually quite good sometimes to take these covers away if you have some spare parts to later on because you know it's full with dirt and all this stuff. So maybe some salt from the winters and whatever else. I would like to clean it and remove this uh, brake support. Here are two bolts, one here, one below. I will take them away and I will unbolt this one and not as well as I've shown before. Here, I will unmold these things. They got all this uh, suspension on, and of course, um, not sure if it's necessary to remove to take out this axle from there, but clearly, I will need to maybe remove it from behind. And as well, I will take apart this little stabilizer, and yeah, seems like as well as steering mechanism has to be removed too. So guys, next I will just go under the car. Because I thought maybe before I start to take apart this wheel, I should put some more wood under. So never too much safety. Take apart this plastic piece, which is for covering the engine. So I can inspect directly under this, this clutch what's going on there. It's sometimes not easy to understand everything. I will not be able to show you guys, but not necessary, I think, to just remove these little bolts everywhere to take this cover away. So, next, I will remove this uh, braking uh, support and everything was comes together with it. Well, you will need probably some of these zips. So, I most probably, if I will be able, try to hang it around here. Not sure if it will go that far. Hope so. Must measure maybe. For the brake pad, I had to use 18 mm socket for this one. That's probably the same. Yeah, since I run out, guys, I run out of VD40 as I said, so I will use power steering oil. So put this one somewhere safe.
Okay, next disconnect the ABS. Control unit. Under here. I can hear the pin, push pin. Let's pull it very hardly. That's it. There's actually a little pin that's holding this in place. So that's why it's hard to pull this separately, but just hang it somewhere safe, do not mess this up. Now I'll just quickly put some steering wheel there everywhere, since I don't have Okay, now I'll remove the link. I guess 17. Two meters. Just put this back here so you don't lose it. Okay, next you will need 8mm square. You will have to locate this hole. And open it. Oh, yes. <laughs> Okay, just let it a little bit spill for 10 minutes, 5 minutes. So now I will try to remove, hey guys, I will try to remove next these and these are for changing the gear. I think it's not too hard to put, take the things off. And just squeeze it your fingers. Okay. That's good. So now I'll, I'll remove this one. Attach to the gearbox. Because I did it by both hands. So what I actually did is see I, I pulled this off. So what you have to do. You just have to pull this one, as you see there is a little tab, it goes in this bracelet, so you just pull this one and on the other hand just try to pull it towards you out of this bracelet. For the other side, right there, if you haven't removed everything it will be a little bit harder because the little pin is under there, not able to show you. You can feel it, just take some pliers or whatever else and just Pull this one the same way and make this go aside. Next I'll remove Next I'll remove this green one. Just a little crate under there. I'm going to go under the car and disconnect this ground probably. It's 13 socket. After you remove this cable, I suggest you to screw a little bit this back this bolt in and you can pull this far up so it doesn't mess anything around. Don't forget to remove this sensor. Just uh, pull this one 
like this. The set behind is the do. I'm not sure if I'll be able to show you. But okay, maybe I will. Just like this. Let's see. I have to pull this one off. Okay, we'll remove starter. I'll use 30 mm socket here. Kind of hard to show you, but anyway, just the bolt one is under there, one is a little bit from the other side. You want to look. Not lose these bolts. I'll remove for starter this bolt. Maybe you can see more or less. Where the 30 mm socket just rolling. Looks like it's already where it is. Yeah, just take this out then. Put maybe some are safe and put the bolt, bolt there. So guys, after you remove this starter's two bolts, you see there are spacing there. But there ain't too much space there, so I will leave it as this because I need to remove actually it for right now. But I need to just remove so the other wirings and everything doesn't go together with the clutch and the gearbox to this side. So when it will go, so. I can actually leave it there here and it will slide off and then we'll see how it will go there but right now I'll leave it as it is there okay just I'll start by taking away the safety pin I think you can pull this one by pliers If I'm doing it wrong, then it's bad, but not sure. Okay, here is the pin. Don't lose this one. Now I can remove. Okay, without big trouble, I remove this one from this. I think just by placing my finger there in. Now I'll just try to pull this one out. Let's see how much oil will leak. Who knows? Okay, no oil at all, really because there's no pressure inside. Yeah, I'll put this aside so I don't break any. It's just a fragile line. Luckily for me, this is metal, but you can see there is a flexible pipe, so mm, I can move this aside. Next, I go under the core and I'll go and remove this. As you can see, it's 13 millimeters. These bolts, three bolts, holding in place this catalyzer for exhaust system. Anyway, I'm not going to show you how I remove this, just three bolts, not so hard to open. So, after you remove this little metal piece, okay, next I'll remove this bolt for this axle eye. And behind there, two more bolts. Remove this bit, bolt. Unscrew it. So three bolts. Let's go for safe somewhere. For this securing point. The reason why I remove this, just in case I drop the gearbox or whatever else, I don't bend these axles because now, as you can see, they can move. So I'll start by removing the lower bar joint. Bolt, 16 mm for me. Luckily for me, it's already greased up well and loosened, so one big trouble. But Yeah, 
that's quite easy game. So next time we'll remove the link. This side I'm not doing because it's a bit harder. So it doesn't matter which side for me. And what I will use just 70 millimeters and 25 socket. Let's talk a little bit torque. Next, I will take 16 mm socket, remove this one. Well, just see, it's not rotating over. For me, it's so far it's good. It does not rotate, but if it rotates together with this ball joint, my suggestion is just put some sort of uh, jack stand under there and lift it a little bit up so it locks in place. And even after, after then, it kind of rotates. Just repeat the one method, like try to untighten it and then try to like do this method. If we can start to rotate over, even with the jack stand over, then try to close this again and then again back so we can clear out the threads. But in my case, I'm very lucky this time. <laughs> I don't have to put anything under that, not very often. Some sort of, for some reason, something is lucky for me. I can account of how they have built this one and to just get one eye on this bearing replaced. I have to remove so many parts like crazy. I don't think it's normal. I don't know that just ran out. So, I can say. Next I will remove this front strut, this holding bolts to three in. I will use 30 mm socket. I'm not taking this away. No need to do that. When they are loosened, you can use spinner or whatever else.
I removed everything here as you see. I've removed this piece. I'm gonna show you just easy a couple bolts. And next I will do I'll just put underneath under the engine. I hope you can see. I will just make it so sure that lifts maybe just a little bit and you can see it lifted a little bit so I know that I actually put this on support what I'm going to do now I will remove this this bolt and I will remove the second bolt there so because I cannot resist it otherwise it's actually 16 millimeter I will remove it before I put back my winch mechanism this looks like this anyway now I'll put back my winch mechanism it's not like the only one just two bolts there's one more and I didn't see this before so this is somewhere here <laughs> Clearly not easy to access it like that, but <laughs> well, I might try to do like this just from the side. Okay, look. Seems like I will be able to access it. So I'll remove this one and see what happens. I just need a little bit, that's how it lowers, unless two bolts from top have been removed, looks like this, just remove this, you will need to remove this one and use, I'll remove this, which actually was holding these lines, this bracelet or whatever, I need to use a E12, this one, the RAM socket, and for this I didn't, couldn't reach, so I used this 10 millimeter spinner right there. Now I'll remove this one. Okay, now I'll we'll take out this. This little piece was blocking the way for me to take out important stuff like. Okay, this is with this one. Oh, next I will be able to probably take out this huge block. Yep, I will go down over there. Okay, I managed to get it out. So, again, this was in the way. I could not. I built some sort of, not very super stable, but anyway, some sort of help because I'm alone and I'm not sure how much this weight. And it's always better if you get something prepared just in case so after you have put this one the support I'll go next for these little bolts <laughs> one there one there and another side I think three or four I'll just go under the car and we'll do this this is the other side this is the axle for the other side I actually didn't remove it I hope that I will be able to slide all this gearbox to one side I will not be able to, have to remove this one well, you'll see if I will have to, I will do it. Or I will not waste my time right now, but I'm gonna think that I have removed this bolt. 
Okay, at least it's not for the bolt. And then I'll start with this one, and I'll take this nut, which I have saved for some reason. And then I'll go lower and take care of this bolt, nut, bolt, this bolt, and so other side. So I just remove these two lower bolts. Was it too hard? I'll start with remove two are there. One under there. One is there, as you can see. And I think there is as well one that is not here. I'm not sure if I have to take care of it or not, but I think, yeah, seems like I have to. So, more or less, a couple more bolts to remove. This I will leave for the last. And here are some for the extra safety. Yes, a bit tightened already, as you can see. Hope it's actually holding this nice. So, right now I removed this bolt and these two nuts. Now we'll go quickly remove this one. Put aside and go next to these bolts. So, the shorter bolt is from the so from the top is the shorter bolt because for that mostly this, all the bolts were same but this was shorter and and the second shorter bolts as well from there hard to see but under there you can see the hole that's where goes the second shorter bolt so just in case I tried to figure out how to remove gearbox without taking away the subframe but sadly it's not possible for the Renault they're very smart car builders so you have to remove subframe but to do it I have to remove first this plastic cover again okay, already once lost it so I have to put it in with some metal screws they are a lot and let's see how it goes when I remove this not, I'm not sure how to remove this one, no point for that. I think you will figure out how to remove. To remove this arc plastic, I remove it. It's easy. You can see on my other videos how to do it. You have to remove this. Four bolts. Uh, next, I'll use 18 millimeters and remove this one. Oh, for support, is important to remove. They take some force, plus this will start to bend side when you try to open it. So, open this bolt and maybe a little bit loosen this one so you can easy navigate this. Next, I will go with these bolts. The radiator 18 millimeters, one there and one there. And uh, kind of looks like the radiator is holding just on this block. So just in case it starts falling down, I will stop it and not open anymore. And see how to fix and place the radiator so it does not fall out. But example, filming with the phone, I'll be able to show you this very well. Let me just one hand. Evenly open, I think. Let's see what's going on there. Right, we'll see. So guys, before you remove these 80 mm bolts, put some sort of support under these, under the radiator. You will see these bushing, bushings. Yeah, There's only two places where they are holding it, because the radiator is not holding anywhere else, only on this. So, just so you know, 
right so later on i think i will just remove this one one by one starting with one side and then moving to the other side we'll see how it's going but now i'll remove this ball too and we'll see where it'll go Or you, of course, can remove radiator and drain it and do all this stuff, but you're like me and you just came here to replace this one small thing called clutch bearing that, well, why to do it? We well, have to remove one piece from the other side. Otherwise, it's not moving anywhere. Because I need a little spacing. Pop out the radiator from this socket. So guys, after a long thinking and trying to get out everything, I have to take away all soap frame of these bolts, this bolt, same bolt other side, plus for the engine I will just remove this one this. So guys, finally, I got out 
not out but to have this uh, well, as you can see I have removed this uh, side of this gearbox and it's now on the ground easy to access so to get there I took some really effort it wasn't easy at all but here you can see what has happened looks like the this uh, rubber boot around it is, has smashed and is destroyed and uh, so I had to replace this one was a little bit scratch outside of place where it goes in the shaft but anyway it's not a problem I haven't scratched these ones but it will be a little bit hard to get in maybe I have to rotate because it has two bolts here one there harder to see you it's other side okay and then and, uh, to take this out in and back it will, and it will have put this in right position put those two bolts so we'll see maybe I'll need two persons to do that one and this is rather easy stuff to replace there's one bolt there one here and then just pull this out so I don't have to take this one anywhere else plus if you don't touch your clutch mechanism and everything like this don't remove it it will stay centered and you won't need to uh, center it and it will be okay so there is no need do not remove this one if it's not working then you can do it but otherwise you might have some troubles after then changing gears so the process how I get there of course you can see I removed everything uh, up here and uh, I removed the battery, the computer, this came first of course all these cables, wirings, connectors even uh, one pipe that was uh, for the turbo here it was in the way so you have to remove this as well remove the one uh, of these front struts for suspension everything I removed this one so this bolt so I had to remove this plastic cover I don't know why I removed this plastic cover but because I wanted to replace both bolts anyway yeah I can put all these wirings everything side and then of course down there well there is a lot of things to do as well got to remove all these uh, tire support plus you need to take up the subframe it's in two parts so the first part is easy to remove but you have to put your this uh, radiator on some sort of support and then of course yeah you already seen on video but anyway and then I had to remove this one plus to remove the subframe from the main frame what's there kinda I had to put some sort of force there I use a crowbar and just one side other side one side other side until it get loosened but I kinda didn't remove the steering gear plus right now why it's a little bit uh, it's not completely holding on the steering gear but it's kinda holding on this wooden brick so it's not in any way breaking this plus yeah this came out easy now what I will do I will just clean a lot, a lot this because I have to before I install anything I have to clean everything the thing is that these ones are E screws so not sure what but they're very loose but more or less just unbolt them you can use, I at least use 10 mm socket so no problem otherwise it will be they would be really hardly attached and I would need a different one you can actually do it by your fingers, seems like that's as easy it is the good part of the brake fluid has made this everything easy to work on the bad part I will have to clean this everything as well and then just slide it off because this pipe will go on easy out see can be game without any problems at all and let's see how it looks so looks pretty destroyed as you can see everything in there is gone and it still works, I can hear it but you know, it just leaks all the way away so this is pretty destroyed <laughs> well let's put the new one next to it so this is how it looks the new one and this is the old one and the old one is pretty much destroyed there so what I will do 
make uh, this one uh, install a little bit easier, at least a little bit easier to bleed it. I will just use those four and spray fluid. Just make sure you don't put any rains inside. But because I'm working outside, there everything is sand. It's already open because I tested if it's broken or not. And then just put this one inside. Make sure it's uh, in contact with fuel fluid itself. And when it is, just press this out. And try to suck in this brake fluid. When you have removed the old part, take the new part, just install it. Shouldn't be too hard. Make sure it fits as it should be. Seems pretty okay. And then take the bolts. That's how you lose your doors. So just you to screw this evenly. Tighten them up. Remember this aluminium so you don't over tighten. Just hand tight. Okay. That will be good. Here I can see I'm starting to lower it. So we lift this up. I will use the winch mechanism. And under there there is a some sort of wooden piece which is on top of here so I can lift this up without too much force if it's necessary and to help it navigate in the right place but honestly this is two people work so I will ask help but more or less you can see how to put everything together As you can see here, I put everything on two strings, but more or less this other side is less down. No, it's more down, yeah. So I have to pull this up. Uh, so guys, still alone, but I got the car, uh, this gearbox quite far up, so not too far away there. I got some more sort of stuff like this extra all over this place so you can do alone actually and you see I can easily maneuver this one what's good is good also that it's about this point because this is the hardest point where this lower arm is so but I could move it a little bit so that's why I could get it over so if you get it over more or less the rest is a history I think so so no I just have to put the here in you can actually do it without too much force anymore So this is about it, it's almost uh, fit there, No, only I have to put some bolts through and have to do it evenly so it stays in place, more or less, not the easiest part, but if you cannot get middle through, it's very easy to rotate this um, axle shaft gearbox, uh, these uh, gears inside, you can see, and just rotate a little bit and a little bit and try to operate, you can lower and lift and lift up your engine as well, maybe that will help you to get place this in but see this is right now in and that's a good sign just to find out where I put 
all the bolts and everything. Well, because I forgot to put this before I installed the gearbox, I had to actually remove all this. So, it took me a little bit more time because this was hard to get out this bolt, but I will later on replace it. And then, then no, I'll take this out. Actually, I will have to replace. I wanted to check out as well this strut front, as well this uh, boot and everything else. Everything is fine and replaced. Rubber parts, but so I'm very happy that I actually managed to get out everything nice and easy. Plus, it will be a lot easier for me to put back the subframe because this is not in the way, and so I hope so. We'll see. So next, what I will do, I will put back in this subframe. As you see, for me it's easy because I removed this whole sector and I will be able to just push back in this axle there without any problems so further. So I can already start putting everything back together and what you have to get, you have to get this one in the center. You see the bolt there goes through, that's good. And what you can just do, take this one bolt remember what was the bolt I actually secured this one in place with a block of wood so I don't have to carry any weight or so on plus what I will do is just put some grease around the bolt so next time when I will have to do something like that it will be a lot easier for me to work out and work through plus hope this is kind of safe let's get everything together I'll just put the bolt in As you see, it's not that center, so it's not very good. But the thing is, that I will not tighten it fully. It's right now it's kind of loose, and I will go and do the same thing for the other side. So I don't break my steering gear as well. So I will do them evenly. Let's just take the other bolt. Also, I will degrease it. And when you look at this one in place, as well as you are alone, use some top of the wood piece or whatever else you can find there if you have just put this bolt through actually went really good in Well, check, keep checking your position this if it's all right because you don't want to break your steering gear okay let's we'll just go other side so press this in in correct position let's remove the bolt actually again because you have to put this black piece under there so you have to remove again this one but you have to put this in so it's a lot easier for you to do this otherwise it will be a little bit harder at least I would do that like now you can do different but well, this is how I did. And don't, don't over tighten this side because you have to go other side and do the, the same thing. You see when you have put this everything in position, it just sticks in the frame, this upper subframe, so it does not fall out. That's a good thing. It's a lot easier to work around it. Let's put this one back here, and you can tighten this holy. Tighten this car. 
so what I didn't tell you my mistake so just in case for example you want to put their bolts in and these do not line up you have to unloosen this bolt and then you have to just sense in my eyes Move a little bit, you can see you can move it so it lands up. I don't, I'll not show you this one because I cannot do it. Actually, I have to loosen this bolt, so I loosen this one and I will just pull this one towards the front so this lines up and goes well in. So just screw them in 16 millimeters, easy thing to do. Tighten this belt if you get if you loosen this. So the same stuff here. Check if this line. That doesn't line well. Just do the stuff again. Loosen this belt. Yeah, when they lines up, just screw them in. And then just screw this one in. Just take the fattest bolt and mount the engine mount. This might take a little bit force if you have done like me when I tried to put this on. The gearbox actually changed the height of the car plus as you see because then on the ground sink a little bit in the engines by itself so you have to put a little bit force there but this is a rubber piece so it should go in easy when you split this in place then just take 21 millimeters and whatever it is Assemble the gearbox back after I put lower frame there. Next, what I will do, I will just put this bolt, this one, but this is, and then first I will just screw this one in. I hope it will kind of move the gearbox closer and closer. And meanwhile, I will do this from the other side as well, the same thing. So, the side three bolts one red goes there, one there, and there is a nut. You see, it's like that. I'll just start with the nut up top then I'll go with the nut on this side and then I'll go again with this nut see there is little spacing between but I think this will just make it tight again and back nice and smooth so no problems for that It's actually kind of free moving, so not affect Make sure you don't over tighten everything already. Otherwise, you can break this. It's fragile, it's aluminium. So let's go other side. So I'll try to tighten that stuff, which is about there. Next time we'll just go with this one. That's about 13 millimeters. Thank <laughs> you. 
that this is in the place. I suggest you go other side. Almost completely forgot. There are actually two bolts at the top, so you have to put them in as well. Not just these two. Not, the, not just these six, but there are actually eight. So I think these were these. I kind of think this just because this is rather oily end and it seems like it's from the bottom side, so this is from the top. So now I'll go with the left side with this bolt. I'll not show you it how I close it because it's very hard to show. But in those bolts, I suggest you go back here and tighten all these bolts. Start with maybe this one, and then I'll come up with that nut. And I'll go with this one. What? Or less. No. Able to, probably I'll not be able to show you because of the spacing here. Yeah, as you can see, now it goes a lot easier to get it. Any problems at all? It's nice. Do not over tighten. I have bad experience. With such material as yeah. and then I'll go with this one, but I'm going to be able to show you this that kind of same thing, just touching it up. Okay guys, when you have tightened this, there are different options you can go with starter you see there are two bolts and one is about there place for starter it's kind of easy stuff so the starter is here as you remember I remove this one so I don't have to remove all these connections and then, then more space for me to work there it was good choice actually so yeah just inspect if there are no spacing between so you actually know that you have put everything nice together and uh, haven't missed anything or for some reason smashed in some wire or whatever else very important stuff is, is possible yeah here you can see there will be the new clutch cylinder clean it so next I'll just uh, use this one so the red tops now uh, I will put back starter in place and uh, one bolt goes through here just put it in so you see where it is goes there another goes in here Well, more or less, you have to put place starter before you put them in. You see, it's not lined up correctly, but more or less, you just work a little bit with your hands and so on. So next, I will just put this mount in this engine, this transmission engine mount. And there are four bolts: one there, as you remember, one under, one there, one under. Plus there are three bolts here, but I will put them after I install this one because I kind of think this will be harder for me to install this than install that later on. There's all kind in. As I remember, so as you see, this is the mounting. Well, this is the mounting. One bolt here, one about there, one there, and one on that side. So. Just start with maybe putting this in and then about but I'll not show you how to do it. I think you will figure out it. 
more or less here it is four bolts go here with this big we get back these three bolts for engine this gearbox mount or whatever transmission mount one bolt is there one there and one under there I haven't put it yet on in you have to actually work like actually get loose and these all bolts otherwise I could not put this on so I manage different ways with the engine height plus I use wooden piece just to push the engine towards this side and in the end this bolt actually was the problem in the beginning couldn't go as it should be I could feel like a resistance and for aluminium parts it's very easy to just make a new thread so better always don't push them in if it's way too hard feel it too much resistance it's better if they go straight in as they should go yeah I'll try to put this one as the last one because but when I will put a little bit more pressure both of these bolts I remember this piece kind of hangs on here yeah. kind of goes like here so just take the bolts you will need one nut as well there are two little bolts like that I could easily tell this because it's with exhaust just dust now we just put the two bolts one in exhaust system one in the this gearbox and yellow push just not so guys this is how it looks when it's bolted in two tr 13 millimeters one there one here and small nut there so this is done just have to use this piece and just install it there so here there will be this I'll just show you but this is how it looks the bolts so I just install this from the side from down as you see and well I will just use you can use 12 millimeters this uh, E12 socket or I will just use for this purpose 10 millimeters spinner and it will just work pretty fine and you see fits on very good probably I'll just tighten it from above just half from above and half from down below anyway just tighten this one in place so this is nice and tight in place here next I will just go with the subframe so when I had to leave my car on this not car but actually this radiator on these little wooden pieces <laughs> this is the subframe actually I painted it a little bit so it does not rust so much uh, four bolts for it. This goes. No. Anyway, this goes here because you see this is a long one. Well, it clearly, clearly will not just fit there. And the small ones goes. It's here or somewhere there. Yeah. Because they're sitting radiator, so these bolts go there too. Yeah. So when you're fitting this frame, first I would suggest you start with these 18 millimeters. Remember to put your radiator in place. And this pushing the radiator. What about this? Just leave it for later on. And the metal pin goes in the big hole, not in the small hole. At least I think so. And then I would just put first this one. You know the other side I put there. Because at least half of the force on this side. I will fit this one in there. I hope that I will not damage this bushing. But anyway, just put this bolt there. 
that bend it so it goes in straight at the body, the long bolt, 18 millimeters. I'm not sure if it's the best idea, but I could not get my bolt through because it was too short, so I'll just lift, bit, lift this up and see how it will go. And my main target is just to get enough so I can bolt this in. I guess this kind of simulates how it would be if the car would stand still. So that's maybe good on that point. Yep. No, it actually fits in. Good. Also, the other side in already. Gonna have to use this one. Had enough space. Instinct part. This top piece. It's actually fit itself correctly in that's good part so the bad part is that it's actually broken so I had to replace it anyway I seen it but at least it has not deformed anymore so what I will do next just well when I will put the axle in I have to put bolts here and here but put this piece you cannot put them wrong because they fit just one way as you will see by yourself so just like that goes like on top here as well. I'll show you the bolts in a second. Well, the bolts looks like that. Small ones with right inside this torque. I just place this in place. <laughs> For you install this little metal piece. It's advised to install back this uh, pipe. Remember how it was positioned and put it as it was. Put the pipe in back in place. Just tighten them. Seven mil. Both sides. So, same time you already can put back this connector. Pipes you don't forget it. Oh boy. Just put this back in place. And also put this back in place. What next? Well, I probably put back this plus there because. Or this connector, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, this line actually goes through there, all the way through there. Well, this is not important at the moment, so I'll just put it right now, something like that. And it will just be just all right. If I will just put it like this. Yeah. Put it here, not a big deal, not in any way. Well, next, here you can see this is uh, for the my main reason for the clutch. So, maybe let's start with this piece. Maybe I didn't show you before this, but, but this actually pin it's not you don't have to remove it, you just have to press it in, and now when you press it in, you can put your clutch cylinder on top. So here the clutch line goes through this connector. And then there's one more under there. Well, we don't see it but so I fit back the clutch here. I haven't put it totally on because when I will have to bleed it, I will actually have to put two at the end of this little plastic rubber piece. And then I managed to break one of these clips, so that's bad. But at least one is in place. Oh, that was painful. Well, it's not going to break quickly. <laughs> Maybe I'll just tape it around so it's nice in place. Well, now I can put actually back in the sensor as well. It's green one. Remember that behind the gearbox there's one more sensor you have to put back in. And of course, gear changing mechanism and everything else. You will have need to do any special thing, just press it in. That's my guess, but we'll see. Just press this one. 
calling in this autofocus on the phone is crazy. Yep, just pressed in and it will stay nice in place. Here this was. I think also outside I already put the yellow pin inside. Just prop in place, nice and tight. The same thing with the other side. I connected this. Let's just go down and connect the ground. This wire you see here and there is a one open bolt. Right then, yeah, that you have to connect that one. Plus well, don't forget to go under there and connect one of these. So guys, don't forget about this connector. Goes under there, not able to show you. But maybe you can figure out by yourself. There is not too much space. So yeah guys, to bleed the patch, you also will need a tube. This tube is with an inner diameter, something sort of around 5 to 6 millimeters, but maybe go for 5.5 or 5. So it uh, fits better on the nozzle, but more or less the length of it. I suggested it's uh, 1.5 meters, but yeah, it depends on you, because you will need to suck it. You don't want to get this in your mouth oil, because imagine if the oil spills on the metal surface was painted and the paint goes off what happens in your mouth if you suck in so better long, longer this tube there are three regimes so three kind of options one is that it's totally off and uh, will spill out the one is that it's uh, almost on the top so when you attach this tube you will see that if you have attached it to the side as in video and uh, the gravity just pumps, pumps in some oil that means that it's second regime so, in that case, it's like a, there is little spacing between the top connector and this closing point, so the air can a little bit leak in and out by side, but the oil is not leaking around, so make sure that if there is no oil leak, then it's second regime. And the third is that you hear the click, and when you have put this at the, the end, it does not uh, start to fill automatically in by their gravity so this means that it's fully closed and in that case you also have to close the this rubber n rubber cap at the end where you put this tube so first thing make sure that this is in the second regime that the, there is little spacing between the final connection just take away this cap here <laughs> You see which my finger has squeezing it. We will see it for the clutch. It's already leaking. And then you just press one side. Okay, you can put also on there something. Make sure it doesn't spill all over your ground. This looks how to play the clutch, the tube on top. Well, you want that this is not completely on, at least I've seen that. And when you attach this one, then you start to fill with the brake fluid. As well, make sure that the, your brake fluid level is over the top, so there is a lot of brake fluid in. So when it starts to fill in, what you have to do, first, if there is no brake fluid in the line to the connector, make sure that you press the pedal a few times. Maybe that will make sure that some brake fluid will start to move in and out but in most cases it will not be enough to just move this fluid into the this conic bearing slave cylinder but you will also uh, need to use some uh, sucking power and you have to suck out there by yourself so after a little bit pumping with uh, food and you don't see that, uh, that uh, the bubbles stop going out I suggest you to put this one at the end and try to suck as hard as you can and then and then a little bit wait so the fluid level starts to go back in and then suck again until you don't see bubbles at all and when you have done with that before you remove the tube make sure you connect this fully the connector just pop it straight to the end and when you have done that you can remove this one and quickly put back this plastic or the rubber cup and the end 
And in my case, actually, as you see, there is duct tape because when I was pressing the clutch pedal after then, it kind of tried to pop out, so I put a little bit duct tape around so because it was oily, and I think the little pressure didn't manage to hold this one, so and then they did like that, and now my clutch working really fine. So here is my next problem. Try to get this one in, oh, very hard, first full, and then in the end of the day, I started to use Use this wooden board, put it next to this, and try to hit it in. And I managed to get it in, but as well, this just fell down from this bearing. So, what I have to do right now, I open the clamp and I will try to put it in by hands. Hope it will be alright. Just take one ball and see what happens. You see the upper part for the clamp is a bit off. Now I have to just install this square metal piece. So when you have cleaned this one, I put some oil, some uh, this grease out there. So just in case there's some friction, it does not damage it too bad. But first, what you will need to just make sure that you have these bolts handy because you will have to start with uh, putting this strut arm, not arm, but this uh, bushing inside there first. We also have to kind of position this one. And I ended up putting this can a little bit in. I haven't yet put this lower bar joint, but I built a little bit stand here. So I can put one ball there and then I can put another ball both. So when this is nice and nice and tight, you can move on. Well, I can in process how to fit this in. <laughs> it wasn't easy. I can now go put in just ball joint. I just press this. I will just press this down a little bit, push it inwards, and it will go easy. So, guys, I hope you already have closed uh, this wall below. I showed in the beginning how to open it. So, it's already closed, but see, this is the plastic wall. And here you have to fill in transmission fluid. I bought this one, 75 V80, and it kind of you will need 2.7 liters, so pretty easy now. And I bought three liters, liters, and then we'll fill it up. Let's see how it's going. Up. So to make it easy to do, actually I use just some old funnel. I use the same this line which I use to bleed air from the, this bearing, the clutch bearing. And yeah, let's see how it will go on. Just gravity. I hope I will be able to open this with this. Yeah, it comes out very easy. Actually, even if you are strong enough, you can unbolt this by hand. So just put it somewhere safe, where no sand. Make sure that this is nice in place. And then, just take your one end of the line, find the way through. Maybe a little bit more. A little bit more line in Okay, that's kind of it. So, what I do now, I just fill in here, then this flows there down, and then it flows in there, and more up for there, 
the better pressure from above and it flows faster. I put actually enough, just two liters inside. Exactly two liters actually. And as you see, kind of already overflows, so I think it's enough for me. Two liters, good. Maybe that's well. This will kind of make the little bit the oil flowing. We'll see. Well, I think it's kind of enough. Two liters, good. No, otherwise, it's just just pull down. When it's enough, just put it somewhere aside. I have down below. You can clean it after that, but first you just put it, just hand, hand put this one. Shouldn't overflow or anything like that. Okay, just hand picked it there, and it's about it. Had to fill it up. Inspect if there are no leaks anywhere. This actually ball goes through there because you can see there are threads, so this must be other end the threads. Plus here I had to put under the stand and I picked this up so I could put this in and a little bit had to do some stuff here to put this ball through just a little bit lower the a little bit lift up the lower arm and until it was fit in place. Yeah, I'm just that's the easy part just with torque and and then 16 mil, 17 mils this wrench, but anyway, I will just put this one 18 mils. I will use all bolt. It's not very wise, but I don't have spare parts, so let it be so. I think something was there, so yeah, I have to put this one here. Ah, okay, I will take this out, not a biggie. Too much time, I'm just hitting this place by hammer. Actually, put one bolt already on there. We just have to get in place. The other side, you see the hole. I just hammer this down. Okay. Seems almost okay. Just have to pull it a bit back, and it will be all right. Yep. And I put these bolts in, and now I'll be able to put this one and put back this one. That's about it. That's my crazy old bolt. Put this one through and close this one. Also about this one, I will put it later on. I think this was going through right now, but we'll see. I don't care, I'll just put it right now. Yeah, just connect this one back in place. See there are small little pins, they go like inside there. Or you can just check inside how it was, it should be. Anyway. Let's put back these plastic pieces. One went here, and the uh, other side, I actually got these ones new, so I will have to pick them out from the post. And it uh, goes like that, so just make sure you fit them right in. So I didn't put all the, these little safety pins, but more or less I will get to, when I will get them new. Also I have to fold this one in the bumper, but anyway, this kind of looks done this side, and same thing I have to do the other side, and then I will move on to the Next, I'll just put this in place. Now you see, it's like that. And then there are three holes. I think this is what for these little bolts. Hard to figure out what goes where. And the computer can remember that. All these ports were inside, so yeah, it goes like that. So this bolt is goes under. I'm sorry for the fingers. Just, yeah, just put this one here and just bolt everything together. Then move next on this one more. This little 10 millimeter bolt. I think it goes there. Not totally sure, but could be logic. No, oh, no, doesn't fit well. I know, it goes good. No, I cannot say that it is the best place for this. I kind of think. 
that's the correct place. Okay, next. Well, it would be easier if I first put in this. So, the connectors, you see, this is the grey, goes for grey. Kind of red, goes for red, orange, red, or whatever else. And this is the green. What else? I don't know. Kind of. But well, it probably goes there because it only fits there. So that's how it goes in. When these are connected, remember to lock them in place. Just move them quick and it will lock in place. Easy. Next time I just put this one back together. I don't know how it was. Two pins. And luckily, this is it. This slide here it was. Here it was. And this was how it was on top. If you want to put a spin, just Press the pin in and it will unlock everything. And pop easy in. Okay, and put this one as well back in. Here yeah, I think the whole connector is connected. Now I can move on to the battery. You see there is the one battery piece. I will actually put this back in place as it was right here. Plus these two as well for the negative terminal. Next, just uh, put the battery in, but well, once more check in if you haven't missed any cables anywhere, because this happens often. Let's see how it will go on, will it work or not. Yet I haven't put the tires on, so I can go a little bit down, so I'll see on the top there. Hello little cat. Kitty 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 kitty. Kitty kitty kitty. Yo yo yo. First thing, always plus this with red, the black inside the negative, and this piece goes only after you have put this inside and install it. It will secure it from the top. Everything, not sure you how I put it in, but more or less, I will just bolt this in and it will be secure in place. And then I'll start with this plus, plus terminal and then go negative. Okay, first, before I start the car, just open the door. Not to start the car, but put the battery, otherwise, well, this may lock it down and might something happen and I might not get any more in that's what I will do is that way okay, terminal plus goes on really easy just close this tight okay. 10 millimeters make sure you all connections connected as it should be Gonna be okay. Seems all right. Put all the computer, everything back together. Down there, seems all the connections as well together. I haven't started the car for quite some time, so not a big deal. Anything didn't happen. Nothing bad. That's good. Make sure you put this quite tightly on top. You can, of course, it's recommended that you clean this before you put them back. Uh, I'm a bit too much excited if it's working or not. I've been spending quite some time to fix the car and it's a long time past since I started the car. Because I didn't have time to do it. But the first thing is just check if the inside all works right. Inside the car. Yeah, baby, this sleeve works nice. Well, let's take away all the stuff that I have managed to collect. There. Thing is that the car is right now on the stand. It doesn't have, so shouldn't go anywhere. I start the car and check out the engine. I hope so. Uh, anyway, I have this floor. Well, no, just praying that it works. Over level correct. Kind of starts and the kind of works this as well. Let's see if there is any spilling on the.
Ja. Nou, ons. Als je dat ja. Het is goed. So it's kind of working right now, and that's a good part. Well, but still some work to do. We'll see. Let's check the steering.